on the Western Cape and it wants to, uh, shall we say, politically wrestle power away from the DA in this province. And that's not the only reason, though, that the ANC is here. It is in this province, in the backyard of the opposition, because of its rotation policy. As you'll remember, last year, the January 8th statement, uh, the festivities there took place in Bombela and Pomalanga. The year before that, it was in KZN. But now that the ANC is here, they have done the best that they can to sort of lure or woo the electorate in this province to make sure that next time around, they perhaps take home all the spoils. Well, to uh, tell us more about that and someone who definitely has been having sleepless nights and making sure that things go well this side of the country is Mr. Marius Franchman. He is the ANC Western Cape chairperson. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I think my predictions are correct. You probably have been having quite a, a lot of sleepless nights. Tell us about the preparations. Basically, it, it was a very daunting exercise, but it was a very interesting one and a beautiful experience. First of all, you are right that it is once every nine years that any province get this glorious opportunity. Here we are. We had many a challenge. In fact, I must apologize to the people that's coming from elsewhere. I must apologize to the people um, that, that in the past were categorized as people that supposedly were forced to comply with Dompas and all of that. Because what we've experienced is as part of these challenges in Cape Town is that the city of Cape Town, the DA-led government, has decided to make it extremely difficult to have a celebration of the oldest liberation movement in Africa. A um, 103 year celebration, we don't understand why. We think it is really, really ironic because when the ANC, wherever we govern in any other city in this country, we allow other parties to actually use those stadiums and those events. But ticketing problems, fund problems, for example, on the poster, all of these strange things, and guess what? It was fine in the townships to have a particular fund. It's not fine in the, in the CBD. So these were the challenges, but we overcame that. We decided that there will be no space in our country and no space in the Western Cape in particular, the way it's a no-go area for the African National Congress. We've done a lot of work. People have come from the length and breadth of the Western Cape, rural, urban, fishing towns, um, townships, as well as the um, inland um, wine farm areas. Farm workers will be here, domestic workers will be here, people from the affluent areas as well as from the poorer communities, all of them will be here to say that it is time that we in fact take a strong stand against this last bastion of apartheid specialized colonial approach. And that's the phrase or, or the sentiment that's been uh, uh, shared by and large by a number of people that I spoke to. Uh, words such as apartheid, tactics, racism. Uh, some saying that it's uh, the Western Cape's, uh, uh, you know, influx control measures that are draconian. Is this something that's isolated to this province or are these problems that perhaps the ANC has experienced elsewhere in the province? I mean in the country. No, I think it is, yeah, because I think what we are sitting with is an institutionalist form of racism. Just think about it. We live in a democracy. We fought for this democracy. Suddenly now, we continuously to see young students, white students, essentially starting to attack poor black domestic workers. If, if, I'm, if, I may inter, if I may interrupt, when we talk specifically regarding the bylaws, is that not perhaps what we should be looking at, changing the bylaws? Bylaws and all, there's no real bylaw for this ticketing. This was a tactical maneuver to try and outsmart, as they've tried to do um, in the last two weeks, to say, move the minstrels event from the second to the third to the fifth and then to the tenth. By the way, the ANZ already booked the stadium last year. So what we are having is institutionalized racism. What we must do is, as the ANC, we must go to the ground. I'm just, in an ironic way, I'm, I'm actually glad that the, that the world has now seen what we must experience and the poor communities must experience on a daily basis. When the Premier say to people, you are refugees if you come from the Eastern Cape, what's the mentality, what's the psych behind that? And I think where we are now is we must move forward, we must, this stadium will be filled and we will have a glorious celebration. Why has the Western Cape been so slippery in the hands of the ANC? Why has it been so elusive to, to fully obtain? You've governed here twice, but in both times never with a, an outright majority. What's the problem? You must go to the history of our country. Um, this is where colonialism started. The first war of resistance took place actually in Cape Town. 
um, this is where it all started and this is where the deepest form of apartheid in a sense investment took place to keep separate development and a separate divide. Now that was on the books. After 94, it obviously continued at times in the psyche of a society which was fragmented. And what we must do is, if you've got a, a, a party that fights in a sense in a racist way, that's where we've got a problem. But we believe we can make it, we're gonna have to do more of this the next few months, every time, and I'm very glad as the leader of the NC that it came so early, and this has put us in a sense in a wicket to start running for 2016, and that's what we'll be doing, town after town, village after village, and we will have to reclaim the Western Cape for the sake of democracy, non-racialism, and peace, and actually getting social cohesion right, um, so that we can show what it can be done. All right, so you're expecting that this event will be a sort of a, a catalyst for that. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Mr. Marius Franchman, the uh, Western Cape chairperson uh, for the ANC. A quick ad break. Morning Live continues after.